Hi everyone. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create this audio reactive Niagara particle system. Just gonna turn that beat off real quick. Cool. All right, let's get rid of the particle system and I'm just gonna make it from scratch. So first off, let's add a new Niagara system. New system from selected emitters. And I'm just going to select hanging particulates again. And let's select finish NI.2. Cool. So in the editor, I want to set a couple of things up first. Um, set the sim target to GPU compute sim. Select fixed bounds. Then we don't want to render a sprite, but I do want to render a mesh. And let's select a cube. Let's override the materials and let's keep it open for now. I'm going to add my own material later. Cool. Let's hit play and we see some big cubes floating around here. Uh, they're a bit too big, so I'm just going to add um, scale mesh size. And I'm going to set the scale factor to a curve. So factor from curve. I'm going to grab the first points and set it to 0 0.1 so they're way smaller. Cool. Now in the emitter spawn uh, emitter spawn rate, I'm going to set the spawn rate to about 7,000. So there are way more. Actually, I'm going to crank that up to 13,000. Just so we have a, a bunch. And I'm just going to get rid of scale color, sprite size scale, and the curl noise force for now. I'm going to leave the drag in, set the drag to 10, and I'm going to add a vortex force, vortex force, and set it to a bit lower, and let's set the X factor to around 50, something like that, so it rotates slightly. That's all we need. I'm going to add a curl noise force, fix the issue, and set the noise strength to something ridiculously high, like 13,000. And let's set the noise frequency to 0 0.001. And I want to rotate the force around a bit on the z-axis. So 0 0.6. We rotate. Cool. I've got to do one thing. So in the mesh renderer, let's set the facing modes to velocity. So they each of the yeah, the cubes auto rotates, which looks even better. That's great, actually. Let's save it. And I am going to minimize it and let's create our own material for this particle system because I want to change the color over time. So let's create a new material, call it matte, I don't know, whatever. Matte it. And we create a particle color node and attach it to the base color. Save it because that's all we need to do to change the color of the material, of the selected material in your system. So let's go to mesh renderer and to our material slot and add our tut material. It's white now. And we can change this color um, with parameters such as lifespan. So each of the particles has, uh, has a lifetime, an age. And you can grab that number and use it to change the, yeah, change the color values. So I'm just going to add a color module. And I'm going to set the color to curve color from curve and it's automatically set to the normalized age which is which is great so it's just gonna go from left to right over uh, over the age so I'm just gonna start it out with the blue and then over time it's going to go to I don't know purple yeah that looks good ish cool and we are done here for now so let's create an audio 
module for our Niagara system. And the way to do that is just go back to FX and create a Niagara module script. And this is where we're going to build our audio module. Cool. So in the map get, I need a couple of input parameters. One of them, audio, uh, new audio spectrum. That's the one. I also want to know the normalized age of each of the incoming particles. And I want to know the velocity of each of the incoming particles. And I want to change the velocity, the incoming velocity, with incoming audio. So I'm just basically going to multiply the velocity with, um, yeah, with the audio. And a way to do that is to grab the new audio spectrum, create an audio spectrum um, thing. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Uh, module or node? I think node. Node is a good word and attach the normalized age to the normalized position in spectrum so each of the particles uh, gets its own frequency band. And the channel index, just leave it at zero. I think it means um, left and right channels. So zero is left and one is right. And we can just analyze left channel, that's fine. And now let's break our velocity into three different values, so the x, y, and z. And let's multiply the x with our incoming audio amplitude. And let's do that for each of the x's. And I want to multiply this multiplication with my own number because I don't think it is high enough. So right now, um, what's coming out of the amplitude is a value between 0 and 1, and it's the velocity is getting multiplied by 0 or 1 or anything in between, and I think that's a bit low, so I'm just going to multiply it again. Just going to attach the amplitude to each of the multiply nodes, and I'm going to make a float. This is my third multiplication value, and I'm going to set it to 1.6, and multiply it again by 1.6. So it has more effect, basically. And I don't want to multiply it between 0 and 1.6, but I... because that means that if it gets multiplied by 0, it stands still, and I don't really want that. I want to have it always move and then move faster when, when it yeah, analyzes audio, basically, on the beat. So I'm just going to drag out the result and add my own value for each of the axes. So I'm going to make a float again, set it to 1, and I'm just going to add it to our multiplication result, like this. Then, in our map set, I am going to need just one parameter, because we are going to control the velocity of the, yeah, of the particles. So let's create a velocity parameter. Let's make a vector and attach the results to each of the vector inputs. And that should be good. So, yeah, let's save it. And let's go back to our Niagara system. And now, in the particle update, if you turn off library only, you can find our... you can find our NI script audio. Cool. That's one thing we need to set. Uh, that's the submix because we want to know where the audio is coming from. And in this case, I'm just going to catch the master. So let's select the master submix default. That should be good. Now it just catches all audio that's coming out of um, Unreal. 
and hopefully that's it. So let's drag in our system and for the beauty of it all let's cast some shadows and let's add a beat. So I already loaded in a beat but you can drag in any uh, web file, wave file, whatever. Floop. And now for Le Moment Supreme, if I hit play, it moves, yeah, on the beat. Isn't that cool? So the velocity of each of the particles is, uh, yeah, being multiplied by the amplitude of, uh, of your audio, which creates this, uh, yeah, this lovely motion. And that is a way to do it. All right, have fun. Bye. -a.